from tonight's action-packed bonanza, the fast and physical Powerball, the fearsome frantic vertigo, the fantastic dogfight, plus the unfettered fury of the Wolfman. And let's not forget your hosts for the evening, Jeremy Guscott and Arika Johnson. Good evening and welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to our seventh series. Well, have we got some prizes to give away this year. Let me tell you about them. Our winners will each receive £1,000, plus there's more, plus they'll drive away one of these fabulous four-wheel drive utility trucks brand new into the United Kingdom. Well, those are fantastic prizes for our winners, but our runners-up, they don't go away empty-handed. They will also receive £1,000 cash. Plus, we're going to jet them off to the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. So let's meet the guys and dolls who are competing for those prizes. Tonight, they are Pauline Shirt And Tara Layden. So welcoming. They definitely what a crowd. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fantastic. Tell everyone at home what you do and where you're from. I run a trekking centre at Edel and Lady Booth, and um, that's where I'm from, Derbyshire. So the interesting thing is that on Gladiators we have a lot of uh, purely sort of fitness people on, but your fitness and stamina comes purely from looking after the horses and riding the horses, is that right? Yeah, most of the time, especially in winter, there's a lot of mucking out and stuff, and I'm usually on my own, so all hard work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hard work, yeah, I believe it. Now, now I understand I have a little bit of competition, because apparently you've um, pulled for England. Oh, yes, along with seven other girls. <laughs> Tell us what that's all about. Um, it's a female to go wow. team. Um, last year we went to Jersey in September for England, and this year we're going to America for the World Championships. In fact. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, have our female gladiators got their work cut out? Because, of course, you've got Whiplash tonight. Yeah, Whiplash and Jewel. So I picked Rio, so I wanted her. <laughs> wow, something to look forward to. Let's hear it for Pauline Shirt. Tara, uh, tell me, how awesome is it to be in this incredible arena? It's the start of this world, it really is. And uh, how much support have you brought with you this afternoon? I've brought 200 fans with me. <laughs> tell us uh, what you do and where you come from. I'm actually a retail assistant for a supermarket, and I'm from Western Supermare! <laughs> and uh, how difficult has the training been to prepare for gladiators? The training's been quite difficult. Um, it's a lot of uh, cardiovascular work, um, a bit of training in the gym. I've been going to a local park near me as well, and also been training there. Um, quite a bit, really. I wish you all the best. Let's hear it for Tara Layden. Now it's time to meet the guys. Tonight they are David Hanna. And Neil Parsley. My name is David, and I'm from Lisburn. Where's that county? That's uh, County Antrim. And um, what do you do? I, uh, I'm a party manager. I take kids, kids' parties, uh, and personal trainer. Oh, so that must be really hard work. Is it child's play? Uh, kids are the hardest to work with, yeah, definitely. That's true to say. I know, I have to work with a whole load of them backstage. <laughs> um, now, listen, sport-wise, you're a bit of a javelin thing, aren't you? Yeah, I throw a stick around the field uh, many a time, yeah, and also do uh, bobsleigh for Great Britain as well. Well, listen, we'll look out for you. Very best of luck. David Hanna! Neil, when you first came down to join me, I know it sounded as if you had a lot of support with you. Oh, yeah. Go go on here. All the guys from the gym, the rugby team. Oh, yeah, plenty of support. You mentioned a rugby team. Yeah, you better tell us what you do and where you come from. Okay, I play professional rugby league for Lancashire Lynx. <laughs> you come from the world. Come from the world. You play for the Lancashire Lynx. Uh, the team's here this evening. Oh yes, big support. <laughs> what, what relations have you brought down this evening? 
Got my mum, my dad, my brother, my nan. They're all there on the front row. Were, were any of those the inspiration for you to come to Gladiators? Um, well, actually, my little sister, who's not here, was the, was the main inspiration. Um, but she can't be here. She'll be here for the next round, hopefully. Well, I hope your inspirations and your ambitions get you through this evening. Let's hear it for Neil Parsley. Well, we've met tonight's contenders, so all that remains to be said is let the games begin. Scoring with the blue balls, it's Tara. And scoring with the red balls, it's Pauline. And they're facing our gladiators, Rebel and Siren. As we witnessed last week, the change in the Powerball rules means that the gladiator has to contain the contender one on one. Siren's playing against Pauline, Rebel's marking Tara. And here's what Pauline thinks of it all. The most challenging game for me and my show is definitely going to be Powerball. Um, basically because I'm quite a big girl and to keep running around and keep myself going for the whole minute I'll struggle a bit but definitely I'll definitely enjoy it but I think it'll take the most out of me. Two points for an outer basket, three for the centre. Tara against Rebel leaves her trailing easy openers for Tara Layden. Pauline's unladen, snatches another for a second run against Siren. Siren locks onto Pauline, but Pauline wanting none of it, pops it in the pod to level the score. Tara empty-handed, but a great off-the-mark opening for both girls. Tara trying to shimmy Rebel out of her way. Pauline finding life to drag with Siren. Tara's free, but Rebel cuts it down. Tara has met tough customers before, but never like Rebel. As Pauline forces Siren to retreat and baskets it with ease, this girl may work with horses, but she's taking some taming herself. And John Anderson giving Siren a slap on the hind quarters for holding. Pauline's sister unimpressed with Siren's tactics. Here she comes again, tossing Siren around like a rag doll. Can't target the lob as well as you'd like. Tara needs an extra half yard to outpace Rebel. Ten seconds to go. Pauline leads 4-2, Siren getting a grip on the situation. Pauline mucks out horses for a living, and she's cleaning up again tonight. Tara, one last effort, great agility, Rebel denies her on the hooter. Great battle of brawl between Pauline and Siren. Mum and Dad, John and Linda, happy with that start to Pauline's campaign. Siren had no trouble latching onto Pauline as she lumbered along, but Pauline's sheer strength and tenacity made scoring a formality. <laughs> OK, Pauline, how difficult was that? Extremely hard, and you got so sort of grabbing around your waist, you're trying to keep rowing. Oh, but you kept dodging and ducking, and you, you know, I think you scored a few points. I tried to dodge and duck, but in the end, just go straight for him. Tara, Tara, what were your plans? I just wanted to run straight through them, but it just wasn't happening. I managed to get one ball in, but it just it is not my favourite game. Not a good game for me. You weren't psyched out by the glass. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> well, I think we both did very well. Let's bring in John Anderson to find out how well. Well, it's a tremendous game there because they're up against very fast gladiators. Tara scored two points, which is excellent. Pauline, four points. <laughs> well done, girls. With that first event under their belts, Pauline has four, Tara two. Now it's the turn of the boys. <laughs> Scoring with the blue balls, it's Neil. Scoring with the Red Bulls, it's David! And they're up against our gladiators, Hunter and Saracen! You've all heard of the School of Hard Knocks? Well, these two were expelled from it. Over to John Anderson. David in red has drawn Hunter, and already Hunter's got his work cut out. Oh, 2 0 to David, 2 all as rugby star Neil drops the goal to equalise. Reloads, Neil with a burst of speed that Saracen can't cope with. 4 2 to Neil, David free from Hunter, centre basket for three. This is fast turning into a rout for the contenders. Hunter grabs a heel, but that doesn't stop the rot. Two more as Neil rounds Sarah and dunks a three pointer in the pokey. Neil does this every day on the rugby pitch, but those differently shaped balls don't seem to put him off. Sarah keeps him wide, here comes another charge. 
and there goes another two points, less than half a minute. Hunter pinning David, rebuked by the ref. And Sarah with some wobbly basket work to deny Neil. John Anderson will have to say something about that as well. And Sarah nailing Neil way after the event. That won't help John Anderson's blood pressure. Neil's mum and dad and girlfriend not best pleased either. Neil again, time running down. Sarah's there at last. Hunter despairing dive to keep David at bay. John Anderson poised to get stuck into Sarah. David with time for one more. Hunter's there, rolls him away, and both players will be pleased to hear this hooter. Sensational powerball action, the most exciting we've seen in many a season. Neil's speed and agility was simply breathtaking. This was just one highlight. Neil, I suppose this game was really built for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it's one of the favourites. Enjoy it. He's a big fella, though. You know, you get a lot of contact with rugby league, but uh, how different was this? How different was Powerball? It's not that different, actually. He's a bit bigger. But no, it's not that much different. At times, I mean, when he landed on top of you, he's putting a few digs in there. Yeah, he's lying on top of me a bit. A bit of a wriggle, no problems. Something you're used to, eh? Yeah. <laughs> David, you're up against Hunter. Tough contest. Actually, I thought it would have been a lot harder. Um, Excuse me, you thought it would have been a lot harder? Yeah. So you're saying it was easy? Well, I was worried about Hunter. He's obviously the best lad here here. But I was very surprised I got a couple of middle baskets and stuff. So I'm very, very pleased. You're very pleased. Yeah. Well, let's find out how pleased, how much more pleased you can be by bringing in John Anderson with the scores. Well, that's got to be one of the best games we've ever seen. Well matched all the way through. David, I thought, was fabulous. Scored seven points. <laughs> But Neil was unbelievable, 11 points. Wow. That's it for Neil and David. As we suspected, John Anderson's played the advantage to Neil, saw that Sarah affected some illegal basket work to prevent an easy two points, and then added insult to injury by pinning him to the mat. You're too slow, Anderson. You held him down there. You stopped him three or four chances, and you're just too slow. He's like... Yeah, so far in the game, this is parable. I tackled him, he was a bit slow in getting up, what can I say? The normally crowd-pleasing Saracen getting some stick from Neil's supporters. David 7, Neil 11 after one event. First up on Vertigo, it's Pauline! Second outing for the Vertigo Poles this season. Fox against Pauline. Fox fast on the climb. Each has to traverse five poles, transferring pole to pole from the platforms at the top. And the best way to learn how it's played is to watch. If Pauline's the race winner, she'll bank ten points. If Fox takes it, Pauline will score a point for every pole she's completed. And the swaying brings the next pole into range. Fox grabs her second, and those poles are nearly 30 feet in the air. Pauline going for pole three. And Fox, almost a flying fox for that transfer. She is just the edge as both girls stretch for pole four. Pauline's there too. Her sister's happy with her work so far. Pole five, Pauline's got the edge. Leading into the finish hoop. Pauline points to win it. A great ten-point pole-to-pole victory for Pauline. Pauline stole the Vertigo victory on that last pole, used her extra poundage, forcing her pole to the hoop and ringing up the points. Next up, it's Tara! And she's going to be racing against Lightning! I would like to join in this Tara's drawn a short straw for this high polarity event because Lightning's already proved herself to be poles apart from everyone else in Vertigo. Tara climbing strongly, and Lightning tops her pole. Now, who's the most highly swung? Lightning first to make it move. Tara trailing. And Lightning makes a move on pole two. Tara still working that pole with her body, grabs the top of her second. Lightning at full stretch, but not enough to take pole three, and a great reach by Tara back in contention. Neck and neck with Lightning. Can she match her on the next swing? Oh, she can! Tara's there, Lightning in trouble and trailing. 
Lightning's now back in it. Tara onto pole five. Can she snatch the 10 from under Lightning's nose? Lightning desperate to get back on terms. Oh, but Tara's done it. Grabs the red ring, 10 points. And that's brought a smile to her brother's faces. Well, Tara, at the beginning there, I was a little bit concerned. I thought Lightning may have a bit of an advantage, but my goodness, you were fast. I was actually just relying on my weight to take me over. I knew Lightning was a bit lighter. And I thought, just swing it a little bit and just lean over put as much weight as I can on one side and just go for it. Well, you swung very well. You picked up 10 points. Well done. Three events to go. Pauline moves up to 14 points, Tara to 12. So now we move into the men's event with David. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he's going to be facing the Wolfman. Wolf's not a great lover of heights, but it seems he's in good company with kids' party manager David. Basically, the hardest thing for me to overcome uh, arriving here uh, the past week was a fear of heights. I'm awful with heights, uh, although I was keeping that secret uh, up until now. The referee whistles them away. Wolf near side, already unsteady with his footing. David climbing fast, sure footed. Oh, no, he's not. If Wolf gets to the first platform in front, it'll be the only time he's topped any kind of pole in his life. Wolf ready to wobble that pole, but David's got the measure of it already. On to pole two. Grandma was pulling her hair out. David reaching for pole three, leaving Wolf struggling to cope with pole two. David claimed he had apprehension about heights, but that vertigo seems to have vanished. Pole four. Wolf fighting back. David's girlfriend, Kirsty, can taste victory. Pole five, just a hoop to swing to. He's there! <laughs> Wolf was never a happy bunny, as you can see from this changeover. David's extra weight paid dividends. Congratulations, David, and um, not only are you a big boy, but you have a fabulous reach. Yeah, I've got monkey arms, big hands. So uh, they're farmer hands and those rings no problem at all. You must be I delighted. Be bad wolf. You certainly have. You must be delighted with ten points. <laughs> well done. Wolf, uh, I think David took the Mickey out there. Shut up a minute. <laughs> now listen, I want you to take a close look at this game. Take a close look at him. The body weight helped him win the game. That's the only reason. No skill at all. David has no skill. No skill. It's the extra body weight. That's the only reason. Let's give it up for the wall. Looks like the wolf has got the ump big time. Oh, he snatched a glad hand. I think it's from one of David's nieces. That's David's Uncle Ron in the moustache. He's dying to get a piece of wolf. It's all turned ugly, but that's the wolf for you. It's always the same. A leopard never changes his spots, and the wolf never changes his underwear. He's got a big, big, big down there. Look, the tails. He's only a slobber. Ah, the finger of guilt pointed firmly at the Wolfman, but look at this, Wolf with a replacement. Don't grab his hair too hard, Ron. Next up on Vertigo, it's Neil! Yeah! He's going to be facing Cobra! Yeah! Over to Giants. Contender! Cobra's first outing this year, a veteran of six seasons, and he's certainly slithering his way up that pole. Terrific lead over Neil, the rugby pro from the Lancashire Lynx. Cobra tops off first. How fast can he get into the swing of this? It will take two sways to get him onto his second pole, and he takes it with ease and moves on. Neil's still moving from pole one. Cobra winding it up for the next transfer, onto pole three, grabs it, scrambles across. In the background, Neil, living life on the edge, needs to pull something together quick if he's to swing this event back in his direction. Cobra on pole four. 
Neil stretching for his pole four. He's there. Cobra still in command, but Neil's leveled it up. Both on pole five. Great recovery from the contender. He'll take the hoot. Neil with a suicide jump wins it. Well, Cobra thought he had it in the bag, but with sheer courage, Neil pulled back Cobra's lead, then leapt into thin air in the hope of grabbing the hoop. Ten points thoroughly deserved. Mr. Parsley, there I was thinking, oh, no, there's going to be no points here. And then you caught him up. You were fantastic. Got, got a gamble, saw he was ahead, and it came off, luckily. Let's hear it for Neil, though. Ten points. Well done. <laughs> Cobra, that was so close. I was getting really excited then. I thought I was actually going to win something. I must say, what an incredible athlete. What strength, what athleticism. And I think that he was good as well. <laughs> always modest, always modest. It's enough to turn your hair white. Two events gone, David 17, Neil 21. Still to come on Gladiators. Aerial combat in dogfight, pugilistic punishment in duel, not forgetting the Wolfman, all after the break. It's Pauline! And she's going to be pulling against Siren! Pauline has every reason to feel comfortable. She holds a two-point lead over Tara. She's a national tug-of-war heroine. And look at these stats. 183 tall and 78 kilos in the weight division. Off of those numbers up against Sirens, Pauline three centimetres taller and eight kilos heavier. Half a minute of heaving and hauling. Ten points if Pauline pulled Siren out of the ring. Oh, what am I talking about? If. 3.8 seconds, ten points in the sack. Pauline makes it look so easy. Even the slow motion replay will be over before you know it. Just like taking a puppy for a walk. Half a dozen steps and Pauline makes the Siren wail. Tara looks pensive. Here's why. My training here at the indoor arena has been really, really hard. I mean, I find it quite difficult, but at the same time, it's been enjoyable. The people around me that have been helping me through the actual games have been really good, they've been really helpful, and I've really enjoyed it. Can Tara emulate Pauline's example? Fox just manages to get the brakes on. Tara will score 10 for a win. Whoever lets the dog bone slip is disqualified. Tara working Fox hard. Fox having to dig her heels in to keep Tara on a tight rein. Less than 15 seconds to go. Tara can't shift over speed, so needs to test Fox's strength. Tara always on the edge of success, then suddenly brought back. Plenty of effort, but these girls equally match. Good work from Fox. She'll keep a clean sheet. Tenacious Tara didn't have enough weight to throw around in this event. Fair dues to Tara. She never gave up. And brother Brendan rightly applauds the effort, but after three events, Pauline has double her opponent's score. Pauline 24, Tara 12. Fight. Our first male contender is David. And he's facing Cobra. Over to John Anderson. Contender, While the two airships gain altitude, let me apprise you of the rules. 30 seconds of airborne action, jousting with combat clubs, two strikes on your opponent's chest plate, and they're out. A hit on Cobra's chest is signaled by a shower of sparks and five points. A second hit will drop him out of the game and score ten. If David takes two hits, he's ejected as battle commences. The Gladiators' flying circus has come to town. Kirsty and Catherine on the edges of their seats. Either that or they can't see a thing. David's taken a hit, one more and he's gone. The clock going down, he's determined not to. Cobra's chest plate glowing in the gloom, and David smacks it for five points. That went down well with David's people. Cobra can't afford another defeat. He'd rather be a red baron than a red-faced gladiator. Time-up's looming. Five points to David. 
The Hanna family magnificent in their show of support. Well, Cobra left a gap, David tapped him on the nose and then rubbed it on his chest to make the sparks fly. Thumbs up from a fan. It's a puppet. Our second male contender is Neil! And he's up against Ace! The Air Ace's physical report is A1. Stands 1 meter 85 tall and weighs in at 105 kilos. Flying in the face of all that will be Neil, 6 centimeters taller but 19 kilos lighter. The attack runs are underway. The clock starts on the first engagement. Neil under fire immediately. Ace, a relentless clubber. Strike one to Ace. Neil on borrowed time. His dad Joe offering tactical advice. Neil flying by the skin of his pants. Another hit and he's earthbound. Who fly on Gladiator's Airways? It's the service you get. Oh, and Ace gets him. Big direct hit to the chest plate. Neil ejected from his airship. Louise and Dan in despair. Roger, another one up to the ace, and a net loss for Neil. After three events, David takes the lead with 22, while Neil sticks on 21. Our first female contender is Pauline. And she's facing Vulcan. to John Anderson. Contender ready! Falcon, a supreme exponent of ring technique, rarely puts a hand wrong in hang tough. Against her, an opponent of crude strength and ability. Pauline has a minute to reach Falcon's platform to score 10, or five if she's grasping a red ring by the time up Huta. Pauline with plenty of room. Falcon traversing to cut Pauline off in her prime. Falcon fast on the rings. And superbly anticipated swing from Falcon. Grabbed the same ring as Pauline. Falcon's latched on. Now it's all about Pauline's strength. Can she tough it out? She's got a red scoring ring, but she's got to hold on for 20 seconds. And Falcon can't shake her. So starts working on those fingers. Knows that time's on her side. Oh, but she's gone! Falcon plummets, leaving Pauline in the scoring zone. Just over 10 seconds remaining. Will she make a play for the platform to secure 10 points? And she's lost momentum. And Pauline happy to just pass the time, hanging about, single-handed. Chalk up another high five to Pauline's shirt from Derbyshire. And the shirt sisters can hardly contain themselves. Falcon went to work on Pauline's right hand. The hand came away, and Falcon came with it. Pauline, how much strength have you got? Lots. <laughs> oh, God. I enjoyed that. I just um, wanted to get to the scoring zone. Then, uh, then she was on me, and I just thought, oh, can't let go, can't let go. And it's then I remember one of the girls that um, we trained her with, she said, throw her off, throw her off. I thought, ooh, try and get her off. So I managed to get her off, and then I couldn't move. I was like, I'm in the score, and I just couldn't find another ring to get across. But, oh, it took some holding on. You did it. That was excellent. And uh, Pauline scores five points. <laughs> Our second female contender is Tara. And she'll be facing Bo. With a trademark wavy arms malarkey. Her faction figure looked like this 167 centimeters tall, and Weight Watchers will notice she tips the scales at 68 kilos. Compared to that, Tara's eight centimeters taller and two kilos heavier. Vogue swings into action. Look at those shoulders at work. Purpose built for this kind of event. Tara wisely staying wide, moving smoothly into the scoring zone, but needs to keep out of trouble. She doesn't have Pauline's physical resources when it comes to hanging tough with a gladiator around her neck. Overstretched herself a little there, one ringed, and Vogue will want to capitalize on that, trying to move in for the kill. Tara still with a one-handed grip on her situation. Vogue still trying to get into a takedown position. Less than 25 seconds to go. Vogue can't get the swing right. Tara's back with two rings now. Vogue with all sorts of problems. 
Tara's tucked herself nicely on the edge, reducing Bode's options dramatically. Ten seconds. Bode locks on. Tara, amazing, holding on to Bode's leg. Can she stay up? The clock's ticking. Oh, tragedy for Tara. So close. Great effort from the contender. How close she was to a handy five. Tara, one ringed, impacted by Vogue, can't re-grasp the ring, so holds on to a leg, but in the end, it was a shakedown for Vogue. Four marks to Tara, but no points. With one event to go, Pauline extends her lead, 29 points to 12. Now it's the turn of the boys! First up, it's David! And he's facing Hunter! Hunter's all fired up and eager for the fray. Magnificent physique, 190 tall and 103 kilos of solid muscle. David's in great shape too, but still two centimeters shorter, nine kilos lighter. Hunter with a score to settle. Conceded seven points to David in Powerball, so he's not about to give anything else away here. David flying into the center. Hunter's got him sighted, one ringed at the moment, looking to spin David off the rings, maybe. Tying him up in knots, launches himself for a big one, legs up, oh, Hunter swings away. He's back for another big attack, David one ringed and in a spin, recovering, but his composure's rattled. Knows the Hunter's gunning for him big time. David still outside the scoring zone, Hunter more determined than I've ever seen him. It's only a matter of time, he swoops around the back, cuts his man down. Oh, yes. Girlfriend Kirsty looks daggers at Hunter, while Neil's girlfriend Louise seems quite content with that result. Wonder why? Time for the post-event analysis. For a while, I thought you got away with it. Uh, I was feeling so good, and unfortunately, I did miss a couple of rings. If I would have had those, I think I would have had them. But he's a big guy, he's got big arms. He's like a monkey. No points on this time, but it was a fantastic effort. Well done. Hunter, you look so pleased when you won there. Yeah, you know, it's early shows. All the God is happy when we win a game anyway. We're obviously very, very competitive. He's a great contender, obviously very strong on the power events, but in the end, uh, got him. Hunter got there in the end. Let's give it up for David and Hunter. <laughs> Our second male contender is Neil. He's up against that big bad wolf. We've got some bad news for Wolfie. You may remember his old sparring partner, Vulcan, who popped in last week on his way back to Australia. Well, he was so unpopular, he's coming back next week. Over to John Anderson. Contender! by Hunter's impressive success, the Wolf sets off to work. He might huff and puff, but he can blow any contender's chances way out of the window in this particular event. Giant swings from Wolf. Neil better on the ground than he is in the air. And Wolf already in a takedown position, marking his time, making sure the moment is right. Wolf snatching a ring to get a piece of Neil. Neil's nan, Winnie, offering directional advice. Wolf could do with some himself, actually, because in case it's escaped his attention, he's actually got his back to the action. Wolf won ring now. Not exactly a textbook performance. Turn round, Wolf, he's behind you. Neil well short of the scoring zone, but time's running out, and Wolf doesn't seem to be quite as in control as he was. It's turning out to be a real dogfight. Neil makes his move. Oh, but Wolf's there to grab him. It's a takedown. Pounded out of town by the Wolf. Kirsty and Catherine seem to have perked up a bit. And here's why Wolf is pinning Neil to the crash match. Appalling scenes of bad sportsmanship from Wolf. John Anderson getting stuck in. Even clips Neil around the ear for good measure. Neil. Neil, you, you've still got a smile on your face, so it seems as if you're taking it in the right spirit. Yeah, wasn't much cop up there, really. Didn't really go as, as, a, as, a, as a plan, really, but that's a worry. What was the plan, to get to the other end? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> stay away from him, but went right at him. Got you in the end. Wolf, why spoil it? You did so well, and then you have to go and ruin it. 
Well, to be honest with you, this is a cat and wolf game. And uh, you got to admit, I was good, wasn't I? Wolf, wolf, they love you. Let's give it up for Neil and Wolf. Four action-filled events down, one to go. Scores stay the same. This is the deal that Pauline was hoping for. Rio on the dueling platform. Five points for a draw, ten for a win. A real test of who's best with a pugil stick. Pauline sticks one in first. Blazing with a second. Rio galvanized into action. Pauline in trouble with a stick. Rio slams her on right on the side of the headgear. And Pauline is stunned. She's dropped off the perch. Put away by Rio. The perils of Pauline. Rio celebrates a great victory over a real tough contender. Tara's brother Brendan pleads with that. Rio smashes home a big right, then a big one and Pauline's on a collision course with the mat. Next up on duel, it's Tara. And she's going to be facing Rebel. Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! Anita, ready! Tara could do with the points here. She's trailing by 17. Needs to narrow that margin to give herself a sporting chance to the Eliminator. It's showtime! Tara taking the match to Rebel. Good, awkward style Tara's got. Rebel struggling to get a clean shot in. Tara fearless on the platform, giving Rebel a rough time. Can't get the measure of the contender at all. Big shots from Rebel going for nothing. And Rebel's blown it! Steps across, 10 belting points to Tara, and that suits Mum and Dad just fine. Tara stood up to everything the Rebel threw at her, then Rebel overstretched herself and lost it completely, which puts a better face on things for Tara, 29 against 22. Now backstage after the toss-up to see who the guys will face. Your choice then, David. Dog Good, fight, David. vertigo, hang tough, and duel. Duel, I'll have Rhino. <laughs> you want Rhino? Yes. Why is that? Uh, he's a bit shorter, and I'd have the height advantage. And uh, I'll bring, bring this pigeon stick down on his head every time. Neil, so you get Saracen. <laughs> <laughs> so now we move into the men's event with David. And he's going to be facing Rhino. Yes, we already know that. Over to John Anderson. Contender! Rhino, clearly in no mood to mess about. He wants to get this done so he can get back into the canteen before it shuts. David said he was banking on his height advantage, but Rhino's still sticking it to him. The blows are raining down. Rhino relentless in his attack, but he can't shift David. Looks like David got his tactics right. Like his shoes are nailed to the platform. He's not budging an inch. Tremendous work rate from Rhino, but he's not going to deny David his five points for staying the distance. A great performance from David. Soaked it up and dished it out. The Hooter sounds the time up, and the Rhino can do nothing but respect this Lisbon-born contender. The Hannah clan with plenty to cheer about. David stuck it to Rhino big time and all but shrugged off the best that Rhino could throw at him. Next up on duel, it's Neil. And he's going to be facing Saracen. One of the best duels we've ever seen. Neil's family have just seen David extend his lead to six points. So a big ten-point win against Sarah would be just the job for Neil. Neil gets in the opening tap, but Sarah responds with a hammer blow to the helmet. Those whites hitting home. Sarah smashes his man into submission. Beats him a dire punishment for Powerball. Disaster for Neil, but Louise and Joe don't need telling. The glorious Saracen, a master of his craft. Neil's fans just wish he wasn't. The tone between you two had already been set in Powerball, and uh, Saracen was here to finish it off. Yeah, I think he owed me one, didn't he? 
You certainly did. How do you feel about it? It was very, very quick. Yeah, he's a big fella. Hits hard. No points on this occasion. And Sarah, well, you've got a few more enemies over there now. I'm making a few more enemies there, yeah. I have to admit, Neil made me look very silly earlier, and I, I resorted to a little bit of uh, silly tactics. But um, I hopefully I made up for it just now. He's a good guy. Hopefully he'll go all the way. Well done. Let's hear it for Sarah. Five events gone, here's how they scored. David 27, Neil 21. Well, that might be the end of the games, but it ain't the end of the show. Join us just around the corner. More action with the Eliminator here on Gladiators. The Gladiator! The Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where it's Eliminator time. Now, in the women's event, Tara's on 22 points, Pauline's on 29 points. That's a seven point difference, giving Pauline a three and a half second head start. Jeremy, as usual, is with the girls. Pauline, three and a half seconds, it's not very much time, is it? No, it's not a lot of time, but I think it will concentrate hard and I think it should be all right. <laughs> Tara, not much time to make up at all. Where do you think you might be able to make up that time? I'm hoping I might be able to make it up on the cargo net. Um, I'm just gonna basically stay focused and give my best shot. OK, I wish you both the best of luck, and I'll see you at the other end. Over to John Anderson. Pauline, you will go on my first whistle. Tara, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two... Pauline Shirt from Derbyshire. Start to run. The high and low hurdles are followed by the first cargo net. Tara Layden from Western Super Mare is hot on her heels at stake a place in the quarterfinals. The big bounce onto the first cargo net. Pauline maintaining her lead. Tara onto the net. This is where she hoped to close the gap. Pauline's dad, John, with her all the way. Pauline turns for the rope. This climb has claimed so many victims in the past. Tara's fans yelling and gesturing as she downs the net. They can see the gap closing, Pauline onto the platform. Tara with her feet there, but she's got the angle completely wrong. Pauline on the ladder, Tara sorts herself out. Pauline eight kilos heavier than Tara, but we've seen how strong those arms can be. Tara's faster on the ladder, she's pulled back three and a half seconds despite that ropey time waster. Tara comes you off the ladder, Pauline back in control, swings her way to the second cargo net. Tara shoots the valley of death to join her on the net. Tara's husband Marcus in the middle there, knows Tara should be making more of this climb. Pauline hanging grimly onto her lead, she'll hit the gantry first, Tara making slow headway up the net. Will Pauline's greater stamina be Tara's undoing? Both these girls have given their all and their strength is draining from their bodies. Zip time for Pauline! Fighting to keep her legs up, can't do it each match. Here comes Tara, a flying dismount. Huge support for Pauline as she turns to address the first of two seesaws. Oh, she's off! And Tara's catching her up as they both jump for the second seesaw. Pauline leads again, it's neck and neck. Now for the Travelator, she'll get one chance and she takes it. Powers up, Pauline Church, first through the paper burst and into the quarterfinals. Tara Layden knows she's lost it on the seesaws. Pauline, you must be so delighted. You won yourself a place in our quarterfinal. Yeah. And you did it in one minute and 41 seconds. That's terrific. Yeah, thank you. Well, are you going to bring your crazy crowd back again? Absolutely, all of them. Let's hear it for Pauline Shirt. Well done. Tara, it just seems that those uh, three and a half seconds that Pauline had on you were, were just enough in the end. Yeah, they, they were. I gave up my best shot. I think I, uh, on the overhead ladder, I, let, I didn't let go of it quick enough at the end. I thought I could catch on the cargo net. But Have you enjoyed the whole gladiator experience? It's been absolutely wonderful. I just want to thank all my fans for coming down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't win, but I've enjoyed it. I gave it my best shot. I did it for you guys. We at Gladiators have certainly enjoyed having you on the show. Well done. Let's hear it for Tara. The shirts are celebrating. Dad with the biggest hug. Tara's husband and family know how close she came. In the end, Pauline's eliminated time of 1 minute 41.4 was over four seconds short of the current record set last week. 
quickly onto the men's, and David has a six-point lead, which means he's earned a three-second advantage at the start. David, you will go on my first whistle. Neil, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. There goes David Hanna, children's party manager from Lisbon, and here comes Neil Parsley, rugby league professional from the Wirral, cracking his head on a low beam as David bounces to the net and into his stride. The Parsley sage wisdom being screamed at Neil. David over the top, untangles his way down. Neil on the downside too, rope climb for David. Neil's almost on terms, Our treads on his own rope, gives David back the seconds he made up. Kirsty and Catherine bobbing up and down. David pumps the pedals, Neil starts his handbike run. David working well, keeping Neil at bay, but he's stalling. Oh, he's gone down and out for a 10 second penalty. Neil can't believe it, nor can David's supporters. Neil swings onto the second net. Andrew Norgate enforces the 10 second penalty. The girls know David's time has come and gone, slipped through his fingers. Andrew releases David from the chasm, but Neil's well on the net. He needs to take no chances. A 10 second cushion should be enough. David trapeze one hand onto the net. Matty Dawn and Louise like what they see, and that's Neil first to the gantry and across to the zip line. David's dad, Elmer, folds his arms. He knows the writing's on the wall. Neil down the zipper, pinpoint splash down. And the gap between the two guys is enormous. You get the feeling that even a miracle won't be enough. The first seesaw being negotiated, Neil's dad, Joe, on the right, complete joy on his face. David, zip line. Splashes down as Neil floors the final seesaw to attack the travel agent. He's got more than enough to tame it. Neil Parsley into the quarterfinals. And it's party time for the Parsleys. It's hugs and kisses all round. David downs the last seesaw and brings up the rear, strides up the travel agent and finishes off one of the toughest days of his life. And there's his biggest fan. David swings himself home. Neil has thoroughly deserved this medal, mate. Yeah. Mate, you're through to the quarterfinal. How does that feel? Absolutely brilliant. So good. Huh. Can't believe it. When you saw David fall off, I mean, what was it? Was it a feeling of, oh, fantastic, I'm going to win this, or you had to concentrate even more? Didn't even think about it. Kept going. Just wanted to get to that cargo net, get up it, get to this travel later, get through this. You went round in a time of 1.26, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's been great. You've had fantastic support this evening, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. We're going to go, going to go over there and thank everyone. On the... well, you, you deserve some congratulations, so go ahead. Let's hear it for Neil! Well, David, I guess we just have to put this one down to tremendous misfortune. I'm going to really go... I mean, I fly across the Munich, and I knew the handbag was a bit of a pass for me. But... I can't believe I fell off it. And there'll be a few uh, disappointed people going back to Ireland as well, I suspect. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to disappoint them, but I give them a best shot. Well, it's been great to have you on the show. The very best of luck in the future, and take care. Let's hear it for David Hanna. Neil accepts the congratulations of his fans and his dad, Joe, while his mum, Dawn, accepts the flowers. And David, well, he'll never want to see another hand bite for as long as he lives. Kirsty with the consolation. The men's eliminator record was set last week at a minute 18.3. Neil's run was almost eight seconds slower. Wow, what action. I mean, it was really fast and furious, that eliminator, as usual. And if you want more of where that came from, join us here next week for more action on Gladiators. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Do it you want. Up next, we've some adrenaline fueled 90s action with Ulrika Kakar Johnson and Jeremy Guskett. It's Gladiators new to challenge. Well, over on pick, they're heading back to the airport. It's nothing to declare UK.